In less than an hour, the U.S. House of Representatives is expected to vote on a $26 billion package of help for state governments. The Senate approved the bill last week. The White House says it would save 300,000 state and local government jobs, including 161,000 teachers. President Obama made a final pitch to pass the legislation late this morning. Joining us now from the White House is his domestic policy advisor, Melody Barnes. Melody, welcome back to Bloomberg News. Always good to have you on. It is a pleasure to be with you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Uh, in the president's statement earlier today, he said that the $26 billion measure would preserve thousands of jobs for teachers and other government employees. That measure is also described as deficit neutral. Why then do we still see some critics opposed to this legislation? You know, Mark, that's an excellent question, and I don't know the reason why. As you mentioned, and as the president said, this bill is paid for. I'll say it again, the bill is paid for. And on top of that, by passing this, we ensure that teachers are able to stay in the classroom, which means that they and their own families benefit economically, and we don't see economic devastation ripple through our economy because they'd be out of jobs. And on top of that, we know that students are going to be able to stay in the classroom with their good teachers. And that's important not only for today, but also over the long term. We know that several states are now looking at shorter school days, looking at shorter school years. That's not the way to go when our economic and when our educational system is already hurting. Uh, the significance of having Speaker Pelosi calling the House back in into session from vacation, th does this does this give a sense that, at least on, on the political side, that there were still some holdouts, there were some people who were not going to vote for this legislation? No, I think that it's a, it's a signal that we recognize just how important this is. As you mentioned, the Senate passed this legislation last week. By bringing the House back, we were able to get the legislation signed, and it will be able to get to the president quickly. And as a result, states and school districts will be able to make sure that teacher, teachers stay in classrooms and that other state workers stay in their jobs as well. But, Melody, you know the criticism. The criticism is that the administration is just bowing to teachers' unions. <laughs> Well, you know, say that to a parent that's worried about his or her child being out of school one day a week. Tell that to a parent who's concerned that their child's school year will be even shorter when we know that whether you're in Seoul or whether you're in Bangalore in India, that they are educating their children. And if they are out educating us today, they will outcompete us tomorrow. This is an issue to make sure that our children are receiving the best education possible and that we're able to compete going forward into the future. This is an investment in our future. Then your Republican colleagues are wrong, you're saying, because according to Tom McClintock, the Republican from California, he said, uh, we're not bankrupting the country fast enough, so we need to come back and spend even more. I, I don't how, know how it could be made more clear to people. We're talking about saving 160,000 education jobs. We're talking about preserving and, and retaining uh, state and local jobs, making sure that people stay at work in a bill that is paid for, so as you said, is deficit neutral, and we don't see economic devastation ripple through our cities and our towns and our states, and to make sure that our children can learn. As far as I'm concerned, that's a win-win. That's necessary. That's important for our economy and for our education system. The White House Domestic Policy Advisor Melody Barnes joining us this afternoon. Melody, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much.